Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 1, Episode 13, Fall With Our Friends. Yes, ladies and gentle cults, you heard right. Season 1, a full episode being brought to you by Sack Bronies. Wow. Looking back on season one, actually watching the episodes, not just reading from a book that has summaries, you know, to do the whole season, because that's what we did for season one and season two. And technically a little bit for season three, because we were playing catch up on the channel, we did the first three seasons all in aggregate. We didn't actually record separate episodes. Yeah, and season two and three may not actually be on the channel. I think I have the audio files for season two recorded. But I couldn't find any for season three. So sometime in the future, you may get a special of season two. Because <laughs> I remember recording these things. Yeah, but apparently Cute High Earth Defense Club and Silly Moon came out. So didn't have enough time to get that edited and to record both of those shows and get them up for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> oh, but very interesting to go back and look at season one, both very smooth in the animation, yet at the same time very rough. Is It looked great in the beginning. We all thought it was well animated. But seven seasons down the line, wow, they've made a lot of improvements to the assets. Whoa, yeah. Because, especially even in the way they animate the assets. Specifically, I noticed the arms actually have, like, they jump from here to here sometimes. There's no in-betweens. Which is kind of interesting for Flash animation, because it kind of automates in betweening for you but there were points where I was like whoa oh well, that's not as smooth as the new season I'm not even going to compare it to the trailer for the movie because <laughs> they're using a really awesome piece of software for that yes and also it points out the amount of character growth because the rainbow dash and applejack that we see in this episode are completely different from what we see in season seven yes because while Rainbow Dash is still incredibly competitive... She's she, tempered. Yes, and she wouldn't have pulled those stunts, and she wouldn't have been such a sore loser. Mm-hmm. Especially for something that's not an official competition. Guys, we're just having fun in the beginning. Yeah. Mind you, we're playing horseshoes. Even Applejack, when they started the competition, was complimenting Rainbow Dash on how fast she beat her time. Yeah. Because she did a really great job. She got a high speed without any penalties. So though Applejack was technically faster at 17 seconds, Rainbow Dash had the cleaner run. Actually, Rainbow Dash had 15 seconds. <laughs> kind of funny how I remembered the number and you're the one who deals with numbers every day. Yeah, so I don't want to deal with them on the weekends. Ah, <laughs> uh, but... The episode, though, was really enjoyable, though I don't remember enjoying it as much as I did watching it this time. I remember liking it, but I laughed a lot more at this episode now. Kind of weird. I guess it's because it's so different than the current seasons. Yeah, it's such a break from what we have been watching. Of course, still, I enjoyed the awesome reference between Rainbow Dash being trussed up like Wind Whistler in Gen 1 when she was running a race to get a magic horseshoe. Hmm, I do not remember that. Actually, I remember very little from Generation 1. I mostly remember the movies. No, in Gen 1, two-part episode where the Moochick tells them they need to get four golden horseshoes in order to save one of their unicorn friends from disappearing because the horseshoes have gotten too far apart. Huh. And so they have to go to four different locations and retrieve four different horseshoes. And one of the ones that they go to retrieve, they run a race for. Hmm. And when Whistler is running and they tie her wings exactly like Rainbow Dash's wings are tied for the race so that she can't cheat. Hmm. And speaking of references, everyone knows this reference by now. So she since almost every review of this particular episode points it out. 42, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Also, what Rainbow Dash says, an egghead's guide to running is also a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. There's a book apparently it's called Egghead's Guide to Something in one of the books. Mm -hmm. And that's another section where there's a lot of character growth. Her friends wouldn't have teased her like that by season seven. They would have praised her for trying something new instead of going, oh, you're a bookworm, therefore you shouldn't be here. 
Mm -hmm. And another interesting fact that's been brought up before by other people, but I thought I'd bring it up again because it's, uh, it's a nice fact in the episode and it's a nice fact for Twilight overall. The number of points on the stars in her cutie mark is a total of 42. <laughs> nice touch. So yeah, there's been so much character growth for everyone. And I'm not just talking about the wings for Twilight. No, that would be physical growth. Yep. And this includes Celestia, because she was in this episode too at the very end. Yes. I guess it was a good way to shortcut not having to have Twilight write a letter at the end. Because this is during season one, where every episode pretty much had to have a letter to Celestia at the end. Yeah, we didn't break that format until episode zero. Yeah, character growth for everyone, including background ponies. As in, there's less repeats, because there were a lot of repeats in this episode. Yes, very much so. I think I saw Bonbon bon at least three times in the same scene. And probably Lyra's in there somewhere. She was used a lot. Mm -hmm. And the moral of the story was nice, too. Just enjoy competition with your friends. Don't make it something that you have to be super competitive with. It's okay to be competitive. Just not over competitive to the point where you're not having fun with the competition anymore. Yeah. Also, I always thought it was interesting timing for this episode in terms of airing order. Because this is shown after Winter Wrap-Up. Mm -hmm. Well, no one knows the exact canonical order of when these episodes are written for season one. True, but in terms of broadcast order, we were getting rid of winter and going into spring, and then the next season episode we have is a fall episode. Mm -hmm. Which means it was probably meant, writing-wise, to actually be before. Not necessarily, because Twilight... In Winter Wrap-Up doesn't know how to participate because everything's done without magic. And this is still a season-changing event with the fall run. Mm. So it could really go either way. And I love Spike as announcer. Yeah, this is one of the episodes where Spike was nice and good and he wasn't being used as a doormat or a joke or being annoying. <laughs> No, oh, he was having fun playing as announcer and I, the ongoing joke of, Spike, who are you talking to? And of course, at first there's no way he's like, them, as their friends show up. Mm -hmm. And then later, there's an actual them because they're drawing a crowd. Mm -hmm. And he's like, them! And Twilight's like, oh, how did I not notice these? I was busy judging the competition. Also, there were several things that should have been counted as illegal during the Iron Pony portion. Yeah. Like any time Rainbow Dash used her wings in an event where wings shouldn't be allowed. I'm not talking about overall, but there's certain events where the wings should have been deemed as illegal devices. For instance, a long jump competition, the wings are an unfair advantage. So using them to make yourself hover to get an extra foot or two on the long jump should be considered illegal, so Rainbow Dash should have been disqualified, so Applejack should have won by default because that was cheating. Yes, and it wasn't even subtle. It wasn't like she took the jump and then had her wings open to try to get a little extra glide power. She very clearly was about to touch the ground, shy of Applejack's hoof prints, and very deliberately moved herself just ahead. That is not a jump. It is very clearly cheating. And the use of her wings during the tug-of-war competition, definitely illegal. It would have been okay if she, like, maybe used her wings to flap back a little bit, still on the ground. But the fact that she flew up into the air and lifted Applejack over the pit? Was definitely cheating. And then just bad sportsmanship to make Applejack let go of the row. I think the only one that you could really have a debate on is the chicks carrying them on your back to get across the muddy pit. Though Applejack should have gone a little bit slower. It was her speed that got the chick splattered. Yeah, and so they got upset and left, where Rainbow Dash was able to give them a bit more coverage because having them on her wings apparently let them be a bit higher and a bit more protected from the mud. Yeah, and the wings themselves were spread out, so the mud was mostly hitting the wings and not anything on her back. Yeah, because there was less opportunity for the mud to come up and around. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only event where it would have been debatable whether the wings would be allowed or not. 
Well, I think it would kind of also depend, would Applejack been able to use her hat? Could she have put the chicks in her hat and put her hat on her back? If that would have been allowable, then I think the wings would have been equally allowable. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a whole Dragon Ball, the first fighting competition where child Goku calls the flying Nimbus and the dragon creature that he's fighting against calls it illegal because it's not physically a part of his body like the sticky gum that the dragon shoots. Hmm. Because the wings are attached to Rainbow Dash, where the hat could be considered a tool. Hmm. See? Room for discussion on that one. Mm -hmm. Other ones, not so much. Like, yeah, clearly that gives you a way too big advantage for this competition. And though, going back to physical advantages, specifically for the running of the leaves, I think, realistically, Rainbow Dash actually would be biologically, physically better at the running of the leaves than most of the ponies there. Because to have sustained flight, you have to have a lot of endurance. With how fast Rainbow Dash flies and how much she flies, she probably has a high amount of endurance. So the real question there is, does she walk and run enough for her legs to be in good shape? Or is it more like the joke where Cadence and Twilight are pulling discord in a sky chariot and Kittens is talking about how she hasn't flown in a while because her wings weren't holding up as well because her husband's a unicorn she probably walks a lot yeah but I'm also talking about overall cardiovascular system oh definitely overall cardiovascular system but Applejack I think has an advantage in anything specifically requiring legs especially uh the hind legs because of all the apple bucking they even point that out yep that was a really good scene Years of apple bucking. Kick. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. See, that was back when they were still having fun. Mm -hmm. So, the classic question. Any nitpicks? <laughs> well, we already went over a lot of them because Rainbow Dash was very much outright cheating in several instances. And considering Twilight's overall sense of fairness and going by the book. Yeah, especially since she points out things in the actual running of the leaves itself. So I'm thinking that's more of a plot device thing, that we need Twilight not to cull on these things because we need the rest of the episode. And I like how they did a twist on the story, because usually, traditionally in a children's story, when this happens, the two competitors are always in last place, and the least likely person gets first. Which means, traditionally, Twilight should have won the entire thing. But she did place in a medal category. Which is kind of interesting. I wonder how many slots there are because she placed fifth and got a medal. Yeah, usually the first three get medals, but sometimes in competitions, ranked ones, like, sometimes go out as far as ten. Though I'm thinking this one probably only went out to five, and I like how she pointed out, like, I paced myself, and points over to all the extremely exhausted. Mm -hmm. This is probably more of a marathon race than actually anything super short. Yeah, it would have to be because you're covering all of these different forested areas. So this is definitely more like a marathon, not a sprint, which means that you should be pacing yourself and then do that final sprint at the end. I mean, at least that's what pretty much every athlete in every marathon ever does. They get a pace that they can sustain and then save those bursts of speed for when they really need them. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me of... Some of the races during the recent Summer Olympics, there was this one lady for the U.S. who um, was kind of had this rivalry with this other lady. I can't remember which country she was from. And it was in one of the marathons. No, it wasn't a marathon. It was a triathlon. And they were in the last portion where it was the actual running. And near the end, they just kept switching back and forth. And at one point, the other lady who was competing with against the U.S., it for first and second, just kind of slightly gave up and started slowing down. And the American just slowed down with her. Because <laughs> she was having so much fun just running with the lady that, to her, winning the competition wasn't really that important. Enjoying the race was. Even though they were first and second, she more enjoyed the fact that she was running with this lady she's been competing with throughout the entire thing. Well, that's the thing is, a good competition and a healthy rivalry can be lots of fun. And that's what Rainbow Dash and Applejack lost sight of. And for both of them to have decided that cheating was justified, for honest Applejack and loyal Rainbow Dash 
to both decide that they were going to cheat horribly. Mm-hmm. The classic cheating you see on a lot of these um, stereotypical stories, the changing of the sign, the tripping in the competitor, which actually wasn't a thing. They both thought they were tripped. But then the first actual cheating in this competition was, interestingly enough, again done by Rainbow Dash. The first actual cheat, which was the branch in the face. Mm -hmm. There's also kind of telling of the character that Applejack believed Twilight. Where Rainbow Dash didn't. Mm -hmm. Even though the stump was much larger than the rock that Applejack tripped over. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that that's still a little thing for Honest Applejack. Because Applejack believes her friends. And in this season, Rainbow Dash always thought she was a little bit better than anyone else. So of course she's right. Also, because of her rash personality, she automatically assumes that other people are more likely to do what she might do in this situation. Yes, which really points back to Rainbow Dash's insecurities overall, which we do see throughout later seasons, that she's striving to, so hard to be the best and wants to be acknowledged as the best because of how much she was put down early on. Mm -hmm. And also all of the extreme encouragement by her parents. It's really interesting to look back on these episodes with that new kind of retcon of the parents. Because you know, the parents have always over-encouraged her about everything. You're the best at this. You're doing so well, honey. Look, she's walking. She's the best walker. Yeah! Look at her breathe. Isn't she the best breather, honey? Yes, she is! Yeah, so when you take all of that into account, it really helps to explain a lot of Rainbow Dash's behavior in this. She can't stand to lose because she needs everyone to think she's the best because she needs that to bolster her own insecurities. So a lot of her boasting is building herself up because so many others have torn her down. Mm -hmm. Or encouraged her for things that she didn't consider important. Yes, like getting cheered for the participation sticker. Yeah, here, you showed up. Yep. You showed up. You sat on the sidelines. You did a great job. Or you showed up and walked two feet. Great. Anything else we should go over? Well, it was kind of how the beehive sort of backfired, because she started running faster after that. <laughs> I would, too. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good jokes in this episode. And we didn't even talk about Pinkie Pie's commentary. Also, how severe of a cheat was that that Pinkie Pie gave Applejack a lift? Yeah. I actually went, wait a minute, isn't that cheating too? Yeah, that's kind of severely cheating. I mean, I could see taking her back to where she deviated from the trail. Then she took a wrong turn, giving her a lift from where she was back to where she originally made the wrong turn. Within reason taking her and covering all the ground that she missed and putting her back into second place, totally cheating. Yeah. And I don't know if they were still in first and second place throughout the race, too. They probably weren't considering that they came in last place. So when I'm saying first and second, I mean between each other because that was all they cared about. Mm-hmm. And I had a feeling if, if this was done like in season seven, because of the assets they have now, we could actually tell that they were falling back in the pack because the ponies we were seeing behind them would have been changing. They would have been different every time instead of the same group, which gave us the illusion that they were always in first and second. But I have a feeling they were slowly falling back, and these were just the groups of ponies that they thought were the main group. Mm -hmm. Also, the amount of leaves on the ground, because the more ponies that have run by, the more leaves should have been dropped from the trees. And that's another nitpick. They were the only two goofing off, and their impact on the other racers was minimal. So how did just the two of them goofing around mess up most of the run where not nearly enough leaves fell from the trees? Yep, and how were they causing so many leaves to fall from the trees during the outro scene? Because it's just the two of them. If an entire pack of racing ponies wasn't enough to do it, then why is just the two of them enough? Yeah. So it's a nice ending scene. Oh yeah, they're enjoying hitting each other back and forth and running. <laughs> And laughing at each other. Because I think they were slightly bumping each other in that scene. A bit playfully, unlike how they were doing it at the end, where they were deliberately trying to ram each other. Mm-hmm. Also, ah, uh, classic shipping fuel. 
Uh, re realistically, in any fandoms, if you look just right, which is looking normally at someone else, you will be shipped with them. It's guaranteed. No, all that matters is that someone thinks you make a good couple. It doesn't matter whether or not there's evidence, otherwise we wouldn't have crossover ships. Ah, valid point. So, did we cover everything you wanted to cover? Well, interesting that we get that tiny little tidbit about Celestia, that she loves fall. Oh, yeah. Which is interesting, and could be interpreted a lot of different ways, since she controls the sun, and fall is when the days start to get shorter. Oh, that's a good one! And her sister's back, so she doesn't have to control the moon. Hmm. I like where your thought process went. That's awesome. So, shall we wrap it up, or do we keep bringing up stuff every time I go, well? <laughs> no, no, let's try to wrap it up. Uh, with a bow, wrapping paper, just simply get one of those stick-on bows. Oh, I always like the gift bag with the tissue paper, and then doing something to the handles to make it hard for someone to just peek in there. Yeah, kind of like the one time my mom, to save on time for Christmas, got Ziploc bags that were Christmas themed, and put stuff inside them, and I'm like, that would be so easy to peek inside of. <laughs> it's a Ziploc bag. I don't have to worry about undoing and redoing tape or anything. I just can't remember where it was under the tree. Yes, yes. I was an awful kid. I figured out how to peel the tape off of my presents and peek inside. And I just figured out how to guess what all my gifts were. Yeah, she's amazing, people. <laughs> she has guessed gifts that I've gotten just by me describing the package over the phone, which is usually a box. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't ruin any surprises. I only did it with permission. Mm-hmm. Okay, so overall thoughts on the episode? Very enjoyable. I, with all the character development that we've seen, it really brings home how much the characters have grown. Also, one last thing. Lux says she said it in other episodes, but it really stood out to me in this episode that Applejack says horse apples. The phrase horse apple is a slang term for horse manure, and I'm just kind of impressed that that made it into a show for kids. Yeah, I think it's because it's the phrase horse apples. It's not anything bad in the wording. And unless someone is familiar with that type of vernacular or reads the type of books where that's actually used, because I wasn't familiar with the phrase until I read a book where they used that phrase and I kind of intuited it out based on what was being described in the rest of the page. Though that reminds me of the fact that out of all the ponies, Rainbow Dash and Applejack cuss the most. Yeah, Drats, Darn, Tarnation. Oh, if I keep this up, our rating's gonna go up. <laughs> uh, so are you done with your summary thoughts? Yeah. Okay, my turn. Yeah, I enjoyed this episode more than I thought I would. Because, you know, I remember enjoying it, but I enjoyed it more this time, as I said before, than I did first time watching it. Which is kind of surprising, considering I was watching it going, wow, look at all these animation, how rough but smooth it is, and and all the tricks they did to get around stuff, like how rough the head turning is, because it went from a 45 to a profile, and it was just three frames. It was 45, in between, profile. So yeah, just all those little differences, the episode itself was enjoyable. I'm not quite sure how you would duplicate the running of the leaves in real life. Maybe on a fall day when the leaves are actually falling, just run through a park or something. Yeah, fall runs are nice because the weather tends to be a little cooler. The leaves are turning. You know, some leaves have a very beautiful cycle. I mean, that's something you go out and do is go look at the turning leaves at, in places because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have these big vistas of giant places that either used to be orchards, just thick forests. There's these great pictures of the colors changing, and I think there's even a time lapse you can find online of this really awesome forest just changing color throughout the season. Yes. So there are all sorts of beautiful things in nature, and it's nice to go outside and enjoy some of them, especially with friends. So that could be the running of the leaves. You go out on a nice iconic or scenic trail in your local area with a group of friends, because fun, also safety in numbers. Mm-hmm. So, outro? Outro.
And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 1, Episode 13, Fall Weather Friends. Brought to you by Sack Bronies. Also, if you enjoyed my art, please visit me on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. <laughs> Where you can look at the still to your heart's content instead of this time lapse with a brief look at the still. Also, if you happen to be in the Sacramento area, check out Sac Bronies. They are really nice people.